I'm an avid traveler, CEO of BuddhaVideos.com, and lifelong student of the martial arts, who strives to know more about the competitors and instructors who are revolutionizing the jiu-jitsu lifestyle. Join me in my journey as I train, learn, and get rolled up. San Diego, birthplace of California. For decades, her sun-soaked stretches of sandy coastal beaches have swarmed with swimmers, sailors, and surfers. But in recent years, it's a different sport that's striking the shores of the seaboard metropolis. America's finest city has become the new hotbed for Brazil's premier martial art in BJJ black belts Coyler Gracie, Salo Ribeiro, Fabio Santos, and Vera Yoshida all call it home. The latest virtuoso to set up shop in this oceanside spot is seven-time world champion Andre Galvao. The secret to his school's success? A competition-oriented curriculum that combines traditional emphasis on solid drilling techniques and a fast, furious pace that helped fuel the fire of the Atos machine. Training with a mat maven like Andre Galvao is sure to give even the best of us a serious case of the H&H, humble and hungry. As a reward for surviving the day, Andre and I head out for sushi at one of his favorite spots here in the funky San Diego neighborhood of Pacific Beach. You've been in a lot of different organizations, Brasa, uh, TT, TT, right? And now Atos. Yes. What's the difference between Atos and these other organizations? Uh, like Atos is like, uh, it's like my school, you know, so it's mine and Ramon, you know, we have the idea to open the Atos team and most of the people, they know about the name of the Atos, so Atos is the, the book of the Bible Actus, you know, and I'm Christian, you know, and I try to support my students, you know, support my team and help them like not just in jiu-jitsu but in the life too you know and uh we we want to make like champions uh in the tournaments in the team you know in jiu-jitsu but also in the life you know that's the most important and uh me and ramon we 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 did we made this idea and you know, we have this idea like in 2008 end of 2008 in 2009, we started the team and the words, and, you know, with uh, all our warriors, you know, like Durinho, uh, Rafael Mendes, uh, Bruno Frazato, Guilherme Mendes, you know. So, and the team's doing great, you know. Now we got a third place on the team in the words, you know, with only like 53 athletes, you know. So, so I'm so happy, you know. When most people think of Atos, they think of a strong competitive team, especially at the lower weight classes. Mm -hmm. Is competition the most important part of jiu-jitsu to you? No, I don't think so because jiu-jitsu like uh, just helps a lot of a lot of people, you know, not just in the part of the competition, like of course, like guys like Rafael Mendes, like Jupiter Durinho Burns, uh, Guilherme, you know, me you know, myself and guys like that. So we we came from like uh, really human, you know, like uh, really uh, like humble, you know, a family, like no money, stuff like that. And Jiu Jitsu help us, you know. And uh, we focus more on the tournaments, you know, train hard, you know, because it's the love of the sports. You know, this our love. I love to fight, I love to compete, they love to. It's good, but I know a lot of people, you know, who start to train jiu-jitsu, you know, just to like a hobby and they change their life, you know, like they, they probably got like some injury and they, they got a better flexibility, better health and also some guys, they are so stressful, you know, during the day working hard and jiu-jitsu help them, that kind of people too, you know, so. When the guy like trained jiu-jitsu, he has like his family, his house, his home, but also he has his, his school, his family on the school. So it's like two families, you know, working good, like working together. So right. it's really cool. So let's take uh, an example of two different guys. One guy never competes, the other guy competes a lot. What's the difference between their jiu-jitsu? Yeah, I think the, the, the tournaments like makes you challenge more yourself, makes you like, uh, uh, makes you like uh, push more yourself, you know.
for sure the difference of the guy who never trained jiu-jitsu who never competed jiu-jitsu and the guy who never who, who compete all the time the difference like for sure the guy who compete all the time you getting better faster than the guy who never compete you know why because when you go to the tournament you have adrenaline you like push yourself you like you you have mistakes and right away when you have mistakes on the tournament you try to fix on the gym like next day you know so the difference of the guy who don't compete is that one you know he learned jiu-jitsu he learned you got his black belt he'll be good too but it's like not faster than the guy who compete you know what i mean you mentioned improving your jiu-jitsu i know you're a strong believer in drilling yeah <laughs> yeah i think like drill is like it's really important, you know. So people think like uh, just sparring, 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 you know, it'd be enough to, to be good or to get a good cardio, to get in shape. But I don't believe in that, you know. So I see that like uh, when I start to like train jiu-jitsu with my first coach, you know, he makes me drill a lot, you know. And he called me like uh, uh, operario, I don't know how to say in English, like the guy who work on, con on constructor work, you know, like the guy work like a lot, a lot, and he learned how to do, how to build this stuff, you know? And uh, different like the guy who works just one time, you know what I mean? For me right now, you know, I'm like, I like to work with my students like that, you know? So we work like 80% of the class, like drills, 20% of the class, like sparring session. So 80% is like drills and specific stuff, you know, specific training. That's really important, you know, because when you spar, like just sparring, you're gonna be good, but you're not gonna learn and you're not gonna work your position in the right momentum, you know. So, so always you need to drill to get the momentum. If you see, not just in jiu-jitsu, but uh, in the other kind of fights, like, okay, let's see a close fight like judo. If you see how they drill, the judo fighters, like I, I did judo before and I remember like I did like thousand, thousand take down 100 ponceoys for one side, 100 ponceoys for the other side and then you know what I mean? So and I think uh, like the jiu-jitsu fighters, they kind of like lazy, you know, they do like five times each side and that's enough, you know what I mean? So. That's the difference. So when you drill, 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 it's impossible. You're not going to work the position during the, the time of the fight, of the sparring session, you know? So you need to be ready for some situations, okay? And uh, the drill makes you like that, you know? So the specific training, you, you, you do that. So sometimes you have a great guard, a good guard, you know? Most of the guys who will have a great guard, they don't know how to recover the guard because never they let somebody go to the side control you know what i mean so if some if some for some reason this happened on the fight they don't know how to recover you know and uh because this is important for you to do the specific train you put yourself in some situations you know of the fight do you think drilling and technique are enough or is conditioning and uh yeah, I think like uh, the drills and technique is really important. You're gonna get your cardio, you're gonna get your, depends on the drill, you're gonna get your good mu uh, mes uh, memory muscle, muscle memory. You're gonna get like a good muscle, but it's not enough. Because look, the strength condition is really important, why? Because when you fight, you know, you have adrenaline, okay? And when you have adrenaline, you're gonna push yourself like five times more, maybe. Like, if you, if you do like 10 kilos power like that, right here on the training, on the tournament, you're gonna do like uh, 50 kilos power, you know? Because your adrenaline, like you uh, And like some guys are like, oh, I'm so tired, I don't know why. Oh, I don't have any more grip, you know? On the gym, like the guy fight every single day and never, never happened this. And why it happens in the tournament? Because adrenaline and because like you like, it's kind of like instinct, you know? You, your body thinks like you need to survive, you know? And then you give like all yourself and then you feel like boom, you're weak. 
So the workout, you know, and the strength conditioning, the CrossFit, things like that, will help you to get a good uh, uh, muscle, you know. Like you're gonna work all, all every day, you know, and then you're gonna like uh, make your body, you know, absorb and put out the acid lactate, you know, from your body, you know, and then like make you like uh, getting better and better. When you go to the fight, the tournament, you're not gonna feel like tired or you're not gonna feel like uh, like pain in your forearm, you know what I mean? Like burn here, you know, because you are strength condition. That's that's why you need to work, you know. So Andre, can you show me something from the garden today? Yes, man, for sure. So I show you guys today. Uh, uh, one kind of choke I like to do, like a cross choke, you know, so pretty basic, but uh, a little bit different on the details, you know. So, and then uh, two, uh, one sweep and one variation for, for the sweep. So, would be like two submissions and one sweep. Sounds good. All right, let's go. So, I'll be here, okay, close guard, all right. So, and then I will go to, uh, to start to to attack uh, your collar, okay? Your neck. So I open the collar, okay? And go with my thumb inside, here, okay? I grab here. Mm -hmm. So when I grab here, all right? I need to keep my hand really close by your neck, mm -hmm. okay? So and then, what happened here? When I start to do this, to hold your, your collar, the guy, he locked the, the shin. You know, he yeah, he locked like this because he knows the, the choke is coming up, you uh -huh. know? So, and then I will go and try to grab. So if I grab deep, you know, the guy sometimes he don't let you grab deep, mm -hmm. you know? He'll be here like with the, this hand here maybe, you know, or he's gonna lock the, the shin. So what do you do? I just grab here, down, okay? So now when I grab down here, so it's really important when I grab, so I need to work with your collar like this. Okay, don't grab like that. So try to spin the collar a little bit and, and hold. Okay, so I grab here, so grab right here. So now you close your shin. So when you close your shin, I work with my forearm, you know, on your, over your face here, and open with my elbow here. See, I make your face to, to the direction of your collar. Okay, so I do it here, and now I start to pull the collar down here for a couple seconds. There you go. Mm -hmm. Tap your nap. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so again, go, thumb inside, Okay, and then I grab here. So the guy, uh, he like, he's not waiting for the choke here. You know, because I grab here, he's waiting for me to mm -hmm. go like deep, you know? So I grab just like that, you know? Now I bring you, so it's really important for me to bend my legs, you know, and bring, bring uh, my knees here to my chest, open my elbow to the outside here, and the, the hand on the collar here, all right? This hand, I pull down, right? So and then I make your, I will squeeze it right here on your, what the name Carotid of it? artery. Yeah, there you go. So, and then uh, you're gonna lose a little bit of your blood in your brain. It's not a fast choke, is it? Huh? It's not fast. Right? Yeah, it's not it fast. Time. Yeah, you need to hold, you grab, and grab here. So, and then you just, just wait for a while, mm -hmm. you know? I like that a lot because I might be protecting my collar up here. Yeah. You don't you don't grab here. You grab I lower. grab right here. You know. So it's pretty simple, you know, and works a lot, you know. So uh, sometimes when I do this joke, you know, I feel like uh, the guy who we get we get the the choke, you know, you feel the guy like uh, a little like mm -hmm. dizzy, you know, like after he tap, he feel like <laughs> what happened, you know. Okay. So it's a really strong choke. Mm -hmm. You wanna try? Yes, please. All right. Thumb inside. Thumb inside, pretty close by my neck. Mm -hmm. There you go. And then I will lock here. So and then you grab here on bottom. Fold there you go. The pill. Yes. Open your, make me like face against the, the collar. And now you pull. Just one day for what? Mm -hmm. All right, go. There you go. Okay, mm -hmm. one more time. One, two, open. So you have to be patient for this one, huh? Yes. Because it feels like it's not really on. Yeah. But it takes a while. So that's the, the choke I use to submit Big Mac. 
And you swept him too, didn't you? I think I not swept him because uh, he like almost fell asleep, oh, okay. you know. And then I, you know, like when I when I put the choke on him, you know, kind of like he tried to resist to open the guard. He opened my guard, and when he opened, I feel like he like this, oh, you know. Then you and then got on the top. You okay. know. Lock there, this. That's a good one. Tired of getting your ass kicked by Jeff Glover? Then it's time you order Bill Cooper's Deep Half Guard Killer. Glover had his time, but now it's my turn. Cooper covers passes, sweeps and Kumaras, clearly with a step-by-step -step instructions. So the next time you find yourself threatened by Reptilian or trapped in the Homer Simpson, you'll be ready to kill it with moves like the head spin or the stretch arm strong or the hippity hop. And then finish him with a supersonic. Sonic the Hedgehog. Spin. Spin. Right to mount. Learn the secrets of battling invisible opponents. And I'm slamming down his arm. And unlock the mysteries of tippy toes. And I'm going to use my feet, my tippy toes, to teeter totter side to side. The techniques and submissions on this DVD are so lethal that most are considered illegal in many parts of the world. <laughs> But they can be all yours today for the criminally low price of just $39.95. But wait, that's not all. Bill's got crazy chops, cankle locks, overhooks, underhooks, fish hooks. And if you order right now, we'll even include this second bonus disc so you can add insult to injury. Humiliate them with a knuckle smasher. Make them humble with the Boston stinker. And finish them off with a happy ending. This is Bill Cooper's Deep Half Guard Killer. And at $39.95, you can't afford not to be armed with it. Shop online at budovideos.com or call toll-free 1-800-451-4828. Call now. Operators are standing by. At only 29 years old and with a far-reaching future still ahead of him, Andre is one of the sport's most successful case studies. A world champ, best-selling author, and owner of his own auspicious academy, there were a million questions I couldn't wait to ask Andre, starting with his favorite belt level. Favorite belt? <laughs> uh, I think the purple belt. Why is that the fun? Uh, because, like, when you got the purple belt, you know already jiu-jitsu. Uh, it's funny to watch the purple belts fight, you know. They are really technical. They are on the youngest, you know, level of the tournament, the best shape, I think. You know, like between like 18 years old to like 20, 21. So they are so fast, you know, like this, like guys who, who fight, you know. And also like, uh, it's the time you, you have your own jiu-jitsu, you know, you already know you have like a couple years training jiu-jitsu. Right. And uh, you like start to be smooth, you know, start to understand and discover techniques. And always think about like the next level, you know, the brown belt and the, and the, and the black belt, you know. So I remember when I was purple, so. I stay like just nine months on purple belt, but I, that's why I think I lost, I, I miss a lot of my purple, you know, uh -huh. and the purple belt. Did time, you feel you know? more pressure when you got your brown belt? Uh, no, like, I feel really comfortable, you know, like, I feel better, step by step, like, um, I feel like ready to fight all the time because I train, I train like really hard, you know. I really love it and I feel like ready. So I remember like purple belt is the belt I, I just lost one match. Just the, the first tournament on purple belt, I lost an open weight division. You know, I tried to fight an open weight division. I lost because I, I remember I was like really sick, bad, throwing up, you know, like I don't know what happened. I think I ate something bad. But after that, I won all the tournament, all my matches. You know. Speaking of open weight, you had some really good open weight matches, particularly the one I'm thinking of is against Big Mac. <laughs> like on, on Black Belt? In Black Belt level, yeah. You know why? Because I fought Big Mac like a couple times. I fought him like Purple Belt, 
first time purple belt, like a couple times, I fought him like brown, uh, brown belt too, you know, and I fought him like in Penance 2008. And uh, he's a really, really nice guy. I know him like personally. He's a really nice guy. But that match was like great, you know, it was like, was like good. I, I remember I was afraid because I had my, my knee was bad. I, you know, I put like some brace on my knee and I torqued my knee during the tournament. And I, for that Pan Ams, I didn't feel like good, but I fight really well. And uh, the match against him, I remember like I was fight against him. It was the toughest, the toughest fight, like, like uh, from all the fights I fought against him, you know, he was like ready to fight against me, I think. And I got like a cross choke, a Hello Grace choke, right. <laughs> and works, you know. So as one th one kind of cross choke I do, you know, and like uh, I got on him, he has a big neck, you know, and it's hard to go deep, you know. So you go like low, and you open your elbow and and start to squeeze the neck of the guy and the guy like doesn't feel too much the choke but he's, he's, you stop like his uh, blood, blood yeah and then he started to feel this and I remember he feel this and I it was the time I, I flap over him and uh, I mounted him and I submit him but uh, that was a great tournament for me you know so I really miss that day. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You've been pretty dominant in your BJJ career. Definitely one of the top guys in your weight class. Then you made the switch to MMA not too long ago. Uh -huh. You have a five and two record there. Yeah, like seven fights and five and two. Right. What was MMA more difficult than you imagined it to be? Yes. So MMA is like, uh, like when you fight. I think to prepare yourself to fight is like a long way. And also like, I feel like I lose a little bit of my jiu-jitsu because you need to start to learn like stand-up game, kicks, defense, you know. You need to start to learn boxing, wrestling, you know. So, and then it's hard to work everything together, you know. So you have your main thing and you can, you never, you never, I learned one thing like, you can like never uh, let go your main weapon, you know. And on these times, like I, I was like two years like competing a lot, you know, fighting MMA, train for MMA, you know. I did like seven fights in two years, you know, two and a half years. And uh, I, I, I feel like uh, I lost a little bit of the timing of the positions, you know. So uh, that's the worst thing, but uh, I learned a lot of things too, you know. I learned like a lot about physical training, I learned about, a lot about like training, like resting time, you know. Because I trained with like really, really good guys, you know, really tough guys. I was with Anderson Silva, Rafael Feijão, Ronaldo Jacaré, uh, Minotauro, Minotauro, all those guys, you know. So I learned a lot with them, you know, and they support me a lot, you know, and also like the training is like really dangerous, you know, always you like, always you got hurt, you know, like because you punch and you got hurt on your elbows, you feel any bad, you need to kick, you need to defend the kicks, you know, like it's more like, it's more like uh, uh, intensive. And when you spar in Jiu Jitsu, you just spar, like shake your hands and we'll go. But MMA, when you spar, it's like a fight, man. You feel adrenaline, you feel like, <laughs> it's like the same, like, come on, let's go. Blah, 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 blah. You know, like, so, but I like, you know, so I hope to come back to fight again, you know. Uh, I'm just fixed my life here. So now I start, everything start to, to work better for me, you know, my school, with my students, you know. I have guys from Brazil coming to support me, you know, with the school. So, and that's uh, when I fix everything, you know, I will start to train again and, you know, but I'm not gonna be like I did before. Like before I just stopped Jiu Jitsu, like, you know, I should do that, you know. 
I should like stay fighting the wars, find the main tournaments, you know. So I just disappear and start to go to the MMA, you know what I mean? That's, that was my choice and then I learned. So always I, I, when I talk with my students and they say, oh, I want to fight MMA, but I say, no, never. Fight MMA, train for this fight, but uh, you, you don't know if you're going to be like the champ or not. Because always we think like, no, I'll be the champ, I'll be good, everything will be fine. You never think about the worst thing, the worst side, you know. But and always I, I let them know like about like my experience. You know? The world is changing, history ages, and things once never dared dreamt now take flight. This September, for the first time ever, the most prestigious grappling event in the world is set to strike the UK when the ADCC International Tournament broadcasts live from the Capital FM Arena in Nottingham, England. By invitation of the Sheik, the world's most accomplished grapplers will answer this call and compete for hundreds of thousands of dollars and the ultimate prize in submission combat, the title of ADCC champion. Where will you be when history adds another chapter to her volumes? Join us September 24th and 25th for the broadcast of the 2011 ADCC Grappling Championships live from Nottingham, England and witness history in the making. Brought to you by the Masaru Fight Company and broadcasting live only at budovideos.com. So now uh, I'll show you guys uh one sweep, I like to work a lot, okay? okay? From the closed guard here. So I'll be here, okay? I close the guard, all right? So the secret of this sweep here, so the guy, he, he cannot like feel the sweep, all right? So you guys gonna do the sweep, you are gonna do the sweep, but uh, you're gonna like surprise the guy, okay? So it's kinda like you're gonna grab here, you know? Like this grip, I like to hold like this, okay? And then I will like, grab the knee here so right on the knee but uh sometimes your pants is tight here see so it's hard for me to grab so what do you do i i bend my knee to myself here and bring yourself to me here and now i can grab and come back mm -hmm. okay so now i grab the knee like that okay hold and close okay so now what do you do here i will like step my foot you know my right foot the same side i'm grabbing the sleeve here right on the side of your foot okay so why why i do that because you cannot stand up your leg right now try to stand up your leg oh it's hard so if i step here you can you can make a base and you can stand up so i need to be with my legs like really close by your your foot here okay so now what are you gonna do i will bring you know my knee like to this way and bring your knee to me here too so when you're here you know now I will kick my leg to that way, you know, and go to the mat. Okay, so again, so I'll be here. So when I grab, I make sure I have my grips. So when I fight, I kind of like relax, you know, I kind of like put my hand on the floor. I'm like, ah, uh, you know, and then like for like one sec, I do this. One more time, so I'll be here. Hold, shake, hold, okay? And then you go. Mm -hmm. Go mount, and now you're ready to submit the guy. Mm -hmm. So that sweep happens. <clears throat> it happens pretty fast. Yes. So you can't allow the guy to get those grips. Yeah, right. yeah. So now I'll show uh, one uh, variation from this position. Always this happen, okay? Always, if you watch like some of my fights, I, I work this a lot when I close the guard, you know? Most of, of my opponents, when I close the guard, they stand up this leg already. Pop, you know? Because they know the position is coming up, you know? So, and then, what do you do? I grab here, and here. Same thing, same grip. But now, I put my foot, step my foot on the, on the floor, okay? And do the same thing. But you have one hand free here. So you can step this hand on the floor. When I try to sweep, yeah, you step your, your hand like this to try to come back, okay? Yeah, so in this moment here, I will let go the, the knee and go with my hand here. 
Okay, my left hand over your forearm, and then I spin, and then I go to the arm. Okay, mm -hmm. one more time. Over here, lock. Okay, go. You step the hand. When you step the hand, I go spin. Oh my God! One more time. Okay, I go, boom, step, spin, bar bar. Slick. Okay, let's try. Right. Here, grab, step, do the same thing. Now I step my hand. Then you go, there it goes. Yes. There you go. Just one thing, Jay. Mm -hmm. When you spin, okay, you're gonna grab my arm. Pass your, your shin over my face. Mm -hmm. Don't try to put your your head, like the back of your head on the floor. Like keep your, keep your, throw the head on the floor and just face to the other, right. the other side. Face okay. to my feet, okay? Okay. <clears throat> just be like that. Be easy for you. Red. Oh, there we go. Oh, yes, there you go. Nice. Okay, one time. Right. Yes. Very good combination. Motivation is a purse both particular and personal. Where does that distinct determination to force oneself to the front of the flock come from? While visiting Mission San Diego de Alcala, California's first mission built in 1769, I got to learn a little bit more about the spiritual side of Andre Galbao. Like, the Jiu-Jitsu for me is my job, you know. It's like a, a normal job, mm -hmm. right? Normal, like anybody. But the difference, like, I, I really like this, you know. And for some reason, God, God put me on Jiu-Jitsu community, you know. And uh, of course, like, I can split his word for everybody. I can, you know, share the word. And people can see me and, you know, in the same way, like, they can uh, uh, see God, you know, for some, some way. And uh, uh, Jiu Jitsu for me is like, uh, is like uh, my job. It's like my, it's like my life, you know, my lifestyle, you know. I like Jiu Jitsu, you know, it's very good. I'm an athlete, you know, I'm, I'm like, I support my wife, she trained too, she likes Jiu Jitsu too. My daughter's trained too, you know. Mm -hmm. So that's what God gave me to me to, to, to put, put food inside my house, you know what I mean? Right. On the Bible say everything you do, you need to do with your, your power because after this life, you're not gonna do nothing, you know. So after this, it's like everything is gone. So do it your power, you know. Give you all your your strain, you know, and everything it works for your favor, you know. Andre, you've accomplished a lot already. You know, seven times world champion. Mm -hmm. right? You have your own school. Um, Atos is going on now. Successful author. You've accomplished a lot, but what do you want to be remembered by after you pass away? After I pass away. Mm -hmm. You know, like, I've, I think, like, uh, everything you do on this life here will be gone. You know, everything you do here will just, like, the medals, mm -hmm. you know, the, the pride, everything, you know. So we'll be like, it's not, it's not forever. Mm -hmm. Just one thing is forever, just the word of God, you know. So I want to see, like, people remember me, like, like uh, the missionary of jiu-jitsu, maybe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and people remember, like, uh, I try to, to share the, the word of God, you know? So that's one thing, like, you, you, you be, like, here forever, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because one day, everything will be, like, done, you know? What's the significance of the Atos name? And the book of Actus, you know, has the book uh, right after John, Actus of the Apostles. You know, in Portuguese, Atos dos Apostles, here's like Actus. Oh, okay. 
So, and then they put Atos, you know, and uh, we did that because me, Ramon, uh, Rafael, Guilherme, uh, some Udurinho, some guys, they, they are Christian, you know, and then uh, we are small before, we was this small, and then we like say, oh, let's put on a special name, let's gonna praise the Lord, let's put this name, and then we say Atos. We talk about a lot of names, you know, <laughs> and we say, no, let's put Atos, Atos is, is cool, man. So, and then we put Atos. But of course, like, uh, it's not like 100% the people is inside Atos is Christian, you know. But I'm, I, me, you know, I try to be like, uh, I try to be always example for them because I'm like the, I'm like the guy who like made the team together with Ramon. Like we are kind of like the the heads of yeah. the team, you know. The, the the main head is like God. That we we like after him, you know. And uh, we try to be example, you know, for the other ones. And they can see and they can tell and they can see God in our life and they can accept God and they can ask about God and they can like feel God and they can like be interested for God, you know. So. And uh, sometimes I don't like when they, like some guys there, you know, they don't, they, they are not like, uh, like Christian, you know. And sometimes they start to sing like bad things, you know, and then they stop, stop, calm down, no, <laughs> not this, you know. So, and that's it, man. Andre, let's talk about the 2009 Worlds for a minute. Samuel mm -hmm. Braga versus Guillermo Mendes. I uh, was there. <laughs> I was there too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they had a very tough match, it was close the whole time. Uh, Guillermo came out on top, and at the end, he made a motion with his hands and a sword motion. And that was, Atos was brand new that time, right? Yeah, it was brand new, yeah. So Our people... logo is like horrible. <laughs> <laughs> what was the significance of, of the sword cuts? Yeah, like, when they did the logo of the team, you know, we was thinking about, like, what are you going to do, you know, what way are you going to use, what, like, image we're going to do, like, the logo. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, we like remember like the if he if he's like six ten yeah if he's six ten God say about like uh, the the armature of the his armature you know and this the the the, the shield mm -hmm. means the faith you know the shield is the faith and the the sword is the, means like the word of God mm. you know what I mean. And when you did that, you know, mm -hmm. we say like, man, we have the word of God, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? So that's why we did this, you know okay. what I mean? That's why they start to use this one, you know, like, and just to praise the Lord, you know, and... So it didn't mean that he No, it didn't mean Braga. like, I kill him. No, it didn't mean this one. And people start to think with like, oh, no, he's like, he's like beating the guy, like uh -huh. cutting the guy. No, it's not that one, man. He's just showing, like, you know, the, the soul, like, man, uh -huh. you know, I won, so, you know what I mean? And, uh, and after that, like, in the seventh, the seventh time, like, uh, I remember, like, people, like, cheering for Lucas Lepre, mm -hmm. but Doreen got crazy, man, and then the people start to talk <laughs> with Doreen. <laughs> and Doreen stand up, look to the alliance, alliance, like, cheers, and, uh -huh. like, like, <laughs> <laughs> and then we said, oh, <laughs> but uh, happens, you know. Yeah. And also, like the logo has a has the shield and the sword, you know. Right. And they start to to use that one, you mm -hmm. know. So and then I was and it start to like people start to punish us, you know, to do that. Mm -hmm. they, they they didn't understand mm -hmm. the significance. They 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 thought like we was like. Like killing somebody, mm -hmm. but uh, it's a celebrate, like any celebrate, you know. Right. So and after that, like uh, Sergio Moraes and Michael Langi, they did that joke with right, us, the machine you know? gun. Yeah, yeah, they have the machine gun. Right. But uh, our soul is like a special soul. It's like word of God. It's different. Right. You know? Now Hafa does a little toned down version, right? Just like two cuts. Yeah, maybe yeah, yeah. Like yeah. He started to do like he, he like the guys here. He faced the back way. to the guy <laughs> and did, you know what I mean? <laughs> so just so the people don't you got any mistakes. Uh -huh. yeah. What do you think about those team ri uh, rivalries? Do you like that? Yeah, I love it. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a part of the that's a part of the game. Yeah. 
and that's the part of the the show mm -hmm. and that's the part of the word the jiu-jitsu word you know yeah. so jiu-jitsu is cool because that the, yeah. the, the, when you compete it's cool it's nice because that one you know so people trying to put jiu-jitsu on the olympic games you know trying to do like all oh, the brazilian selection things like that you know but i think it would be like it would be like weird you know mm -hmm. because it's fun like you are america i am brazilian but it can be the same thing you know right. what i mean right so uh like one japanese guy can be atos or mm -hmm. whatever you know so that's cool you know mm -hmm. and uh and uh the name of the the teams you know the people's like fighting for the flag of the team you know mm -hmm. so that's really cool too you know so I think I think it's really nice, you know, to have this kind of things, you know, people's like, and uh, this is uh, from the Brazilian culture, you know, too, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. like, soccer uh, culture. Yeah, soccer, and you know, like people's like, yeah, like mm -hmm. they cheating like each other, you mm -hmm. know, like ah, come on, go, let's right. go, you know what I mean? So I think it's cool, man, you know. So who's Atos's biggest rival? Biggest rival? <laughs> <laughs> Putting you on the spot. Ah <laughs> oh, man, so. Yeah, like right now, I think the, we, we just work, you know, we work. I think everybody has a rival, but uh, the main, main rival, I think everybody has this rival. It's like Alliance, they, mm -hmm. they like just beat everybody, you know, everybody mm -hmm. likes to fight against Alliance guys, you know, so. Right. But uh, we have a good relationship with everybody, you know, I talk with everybody from Alliance, just uh, like right on the fight, yeah. you know. We start to, hey man, come on now, that's my thing. Right. Well, 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 no, no, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, uh, but uh, yeah, I think so, yeah. Mm -hmm. Otto seems to be really strong at the lower weight classes, but there's nobody at the higher weight classes. Yeah. Right? I don't know, man, like, um, because on, we are small for now, you know? Yeah. So, compare with the Alliance, compare with the Gracie Bar. Compared with uh, other teams, you know, we are pretty small, and uh, uh, it's like our 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 fighters they are like smaller, you know, mm -hmm. like they are like like a feeder weight, uh, uh, light feeder, mm -hmm. you know. Sometimes we have like rooster weight, you know, but uh, we have a lot of uh, heavy guys on the other on the other belts, like blue belts. Mm. You know, it's coming up. They're working their know? way up. Yeah, <laughs> you know. But uh, for the black belts, you know, we we get more points with the, the light ones, mm -hmm. you know. So the heaviest guy right now is me, you know, mm -hmm. medium heavy, you know. Mm -hmm. So so in DCC, I'll fight 88. Mm -hmm. So we have two guys on 66 kilo, Frazzata and Rafael. Mm -hmm. And we'll have one guy on 77, Calazans, mm -hmm. you know. Okay, just uh, let me show you one more variation, you know. Uh, it's the same thing. I will try to sweep you. You're gonna step your hand on the floor, and then uh, I'm not gonna go to the armbar. I'm gonna. T I will go to take her back. Mm -hmm. You know, it looks simple, but it has a little details. You need to pay attention. I'm here. Okay, close guard. Same thing. Grab the sleeve. Grab the knee. Okay, put my foot on the close by your feet here. Your foot. All right, and then I will do the same thing. Bring you. Try to go and then you're gonna step here. So now I will go and hug your your back here. Let go and hug here. Okay? So now I, I squeeze my chest against your, your arm. So it's hard for you to to put your arm back. Okay? So put your stay in your knees right now. The guy who's staying in his, on his knees here. Okay? So now I'll take your back. So I put my hand on the floor here. I can put just my elbow, okay? Or my hand like this. I like to use the elbow here, it's okay. So now I need to use my calf over your, your back here, your lower back here. Okay, so I squeeze her, you see, you feel? Mm -hmm. So and then when I do this, oh, my, my leg will be light for me to bring my leg, you know, and put the hood and go to the back. Okay, so now I'm ready to smash the chicken, you know, and start to go to the choke. We call it smash the chicken. Smash the chicken. <laughs> Spider frango. So be here. Grab the sleeve. Grab the pants. Okay. Step. Go. 
red. Okay. Now I'm here. So here I can like, kick my feet out. Okay. Just smash you and now start to work the your neck choke or whatever you like to do. Okay. One more time. The most important thing on this position is my calf of your, your lower back. Okay. So be here. Go oh, grab. Okay, now my calf here to make my leg uh, lighter. See ya. Mm -hmm. I'm here in this position. Okay? Let's try. Let's try. So you do the same thing. Take a step, you're gonna grab my back. Uh, put your chest close by my arm. Now use our calf of my lower back. So, yeah, there you go. Boom. Now. Yeah. Smash and then go to your next show. Mm -hmm. okay. One more time. Yeah, now I can come back. And then boom. There you go, Jay. Nice. Smash. Boom. Yeah. One more time. Mm -hmm. I'll try to do on, on the the real speed. Let's okay. see. <laughs> Good variations. Good to put it all together like yeah. that. Yeah, so now come here. Just a review. So the first one just sweep. Boom. Right. Second one, arm bar. And then the third one, you go to the to the back. Good stuff. Right. <laughs> Good. Thanks, Good. No problem. Good stuff. Thank you guys. All right. So I'm joined here in the studio with Budo Dave. Hello, everyone. This was a fun roll with Andre Galval here. Uh, I'd rolled with him a few years before, but it's been a long time. I know he has good judo, so I did not want to be thrown, so I was pulling guard all day. Yeah, which, you know, against a guy like Andre, probably not even a good idea either. <laughs> um, I don't know what is a good idea. Yeah, but you know, it was funny actually watching you spar <clears throat> earlier before we did this. It's just watching him pass your guard is the amount of pressure that he was putting on you. It, it didn't look like a lot of pressure on his part, but just seeing your face, um, you, you just, I, I couldn't feel it, but you could get a sense of like how much pressure you can actually put on a guard pass. Yeah, his passing is phenomenal. Yeah, how, how did the Nino Shemri thing work out for you right there? I don't think anything worked out for me. Yeah, that's the cool thing about Andre is like he's just always having fun. You know, he, he's not going too hard on you. He's having, you know, he's smiling. He's having a really good time, and you know, he could have just really wrecked you if he wanted to. Yeah. Davi Ramos was playing the part of the, uh, the referee for a while there. Here I felt him dancing on my back. Which yeah, I I've seen that before. Where have I seen that? <laughs> 2008 Pan Ams. Yeah. I decided to roll over. I didn't want him to be dancing on me like that. Armbar. You know, it's interesting. Um, you seem to have a pretty good, actually, armbar defense. Um, oh, look at that nice camera right to the back. Yeah. Um, you have typically a pretty good armbar defense, but um, from what I remember... Um, you can really stop any umbars. And watch, you. This, watch this karate chop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've never seen that before. Yeah. Yeah. Andre is always the big smile on his face. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Andre's cardio is so good. He was so moving side to side, just wearing me out. Yeah, he never looked like he got tired. A lot of them, I'm sure you know, he's obviously a very athletic uh, guy and in very good shape, but he's also just training really really hard right now for ADCC, so I'm sure his yeah. cardio is just on another, completely another level right now. Mm -hmm. I actually would really like to see this if he really, really went 100% on it. No, I'd probably be pretty ugly. <laughs> we can always go back. I'll film you next time. No, no, thanks. You can just see how well he moves, and 
uh, Andre, I think, just like uh, Cobinha, they're extremely flexible. You don't really see it too much in their game, but they're really flexible. Yeah. Scissor sweep a little while ago to get, to get on top. You're, you're kind of coaxing the, the students to cheer for him. Yeah, you didn't really get that much reaction. I think they were nervous for some reason. <laughs> that does not look comfortable. What was his grip strength like? Because I think from watching this, especially like right now, is that he's just got such a strong yeah. grip on your like, oh. Yeah. I couldn't budge his grips. You see how dynamic he is. Kimura to armbar to the back. To bow and arrow. Yeah, it's just choke, huh? Mm -hmm. This one was tight. chance I might have is to surprise him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're looking pretty tired. Yeah. Yeah, you keep doing that. Yeah. I didn't feel like getting thrown today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've seen uh, in previous tournaments that Andre's just got amazing judo. Now here's a part where I really surprised myself. I was thinking like, oh my god, I got Andre's back. And I didn't really set up a good grip. I was just kind of frozen. And yeah, what, what happened there? <laughs> I just couldn't believe I, the position I got. It, it was like if Andre was like coated in grease, he just like sl slid right off. Yeah. What is that? What is a, a judo move? It's like a it's like inside hook. I'm working the lockdown. Yeah. Keeping his weight off of me for a moment. Did he feel heavy? No, he felt very uh, light actually. It, but heavy at times, but he moves a lot. For a guy his size, he moves yeah. a lot. You know, it's funny you say the guy his size because he's he's not that big of a guy. I guess he's really not that tall. But he, 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 he seems to carry a lot of mass. He was weighing, weighing at what, 185, 186? Right. Yeah. His, 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 his body type just seems to be just very, very dense. Mm -hmm. Very solid. Yeah. Does he ever stop smelling? <laughs> You're making him work for that camera. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. you, you know that comes from all the all the dealing with those guys do that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and saved by the bell. Oh, that time. I was tired. Much like his brand of instruction, Andre Galval, the man, delivers intensity and fun in perfect proportion. It's this balance that makes him such a valuable teacher. Lesson of the day, drill, drill, drill. The perfection of and appreciation for these little things in life could be all that stands between you and getting rolled up. Competition will expose holes in your training. So maybe you're technically good, but under pressure you you, you can't you can't deliver. So you got to work on that. Or maybe you know your conditioning's not as good as you thought it was, or, or, or those kind of things. So I think it's 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 important. I get as far up as I can, and then I use my body to actually move around the back, and I overhook the head. <laughs> 